The views and opinions expressed at Enhanced Down Under are those of the hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official views of the company. Any content provided by our hosts are of their opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. Enhanced Down Under. This is episode 6 of our uh, podcast and this is the official podcast of Enhanced NT. My name is Carol and I am a registered migration agent. I'm Anna, a qualified education agent counselor. So in today's topics, uh, we'll be talking about uh, stricter visa rules, the unofficial statement uh, for international students and we'll also be touching on um, jobs that are jobs or occupations that are in demand in Australia or particularly here in Darwin where we are based so um, just to just a quick recap before we go, we move on with our topics in our previous episode we had a special guest mr andrew coloma and he's now a permanent resident mm -hmm. of australia and uh, in that episode um that was fun wasn't it it was and he actually you know relate his stories and how he became a permanent uh, resident here the challenges and how we overcame this those challenges and how enhance were able to help him correct so um if you're interested in hearing about uh, Andrew's journey from, from an intern to an international student to permanent resident, do check out our previous episode of Enhanced Down Under podcast. Okay, let's move on for our top topics for today. Miss Anna, why don't you read to us you know, the research you've done about what, um, what the media is saying about the stricter rules. Yes, um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, it's very controversial, the stricter rules in uh, international students that are coming here to Australia. And of, of course, these are unofficial statements. So um, they say that uh, GTE or genuine temporary entrant, it's a statement uh, where you are going to have to convince the visa officer that you are just going to stay here temporarily, it will be replaced by a GST or a genuine student test. So the difference between the two is GST would somehow um, encourage honesty regarding students. Um, it would, you know, somehow um, reveal their intentions and possibly uh, their staying here for as a migrant or, mm -hmm. you know, finding employment after their um, studies have finished. And also, um, somehow students and even temporary visa holders are being blamed for, you know, housing shortage. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. say that uh, because of the influx of international students and temporary visa holders, there's now, um, the, the locals are now having problems with, you know, finding housing. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about that, Carol? Uh, well... This is just my personal mm. opinion. So I do think that it's kind of unfair to blame international students alone mm. for, the, for the housing. Because the reality is um, Australia needs international students. And why do I say that? Uh, it's because international education is one of the biggest um, industries here in Australia. They, mm. they, do, they do bring in... Um, the big revenue mm -hmm. for the country, you know, and uh, if you just Google uh, international education, you know, you're you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of articles just telling you how much money international students bring to Australia. So you know, I mean, I just Googled it just now. So there's a bunch of articles here saying. Um, for example, Australian Education International 
Um, so this is a pretty reputable website. So it says that international education is Australia's third largest export overall. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it brings in $29 billion. That's a lot. To the economy. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't even know how many, how many zeros. Huge contribution, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nine, nine zeros, right? Could be. <laughs> 29 billion is nine zeros. You know, that, that, that's a lot of money. It is. So, um, I mean, I can understand the sentiment of, of, you know, the locals, the Australian citizens and Australian permanent residents. I can understand the sentiment, especially if, Especially if you're homeless, of course. Um, but the reality is, uh, international students are not to be blamed alone. You know, mm. it, so it's not fair. Yeah, it's definitely not fair because the, the government has something to do with it. You know, because mm -hmm. it's uh, why don't you build more houses then, <laughs> right? Because it, it's been a, you know, if you go if you go online, it's a fifty fifty. Uh, you know, 50% says it's the students, 50% the students or temporary residents. Um, residents. Mm -hmm. um, and the other 50% says, oh, it's the government. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's, a, it's been a long-running issue in Australia. So there's always been an uh, issue with housing, even before the influx of international students. Yeah, it's always been an issue. Mm -hmm. And it's not just international students, you know. It's also... Um, it's a combination of all the government decision. Um, uh, it has also something to do with the uh, investor visa program. I, I don't know if you've heard of this, mm -hmm. um, but in the migration circle, there there is a visa called investor visa. All right. So basically, it is a visa that offers permanent residence to people with money. Oh, yeah. So that's I, why it's called investor mm -hmm. visa. Um, and I know they. Re I I recently read an article on Apple News, or that they recently scrapped that. Uh, they recently scrapped that visa program. Like already. what investment are they need to come up um, with? Housing, business. It depends, but basically you you, you you've got millions, like five million dollars. Um, and you don't have to do English tests. There's mm -hmm. no age limit. It's really the money. Mm -hmm. As long as you have you have that that much money, and you can invest it in a business or organization here, or a fund, a fund in mm -hmm. in Australia, you get the visa. So, so it's, it's like basically buying your, buying your way mm -hmm. into the country. Okay, okay? and um, most of these, most of wh where the money goes is. Uh, through properties the mo the money goes through buying properties mm -hmm. and be you know and and that's why a lot of properties are also vacant because it's being it's an invest it's owned by someone else who's I not even an Australian citizen you know so it's very controversial really um, and I, I don't, I'm not an expert on it what I'm what I'm talking about is just what I what I'm reading through the news so yeah, it is unfair to blame international students because it's a combination of um, government decisions, you know. I see. And I remember, do you remember what the motto of, of Home Affairs was? Before it was Department of Home Affairs. So in, the, in our earlier episodes, we talked about how they're always changing their yes, names. Yes, like D, D I A C Dayak and then D I C, which doesn't sound good. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. And then it was Dimia before. Dimia. Mm. But do you remember what the motto was when... No, can you... They, they used to have a motto. Mm -hmm. uh, it was people, our business. Oh, all right. Do you remember that? <laughs> I think um, when I joined in 2010, it's no longer existing. Yeah, that used to be in the letterhead, mm -hmm. the Australian Embassy letterhead. Like every time we send out correspondence, mm -hmm. you know, visa grants, refusals at the bottom of the of the template mm -hmm. would be the Australia the the People. coat of arms and then the the home affairs webs the home affairs motto which is people our, our business. business so 
it is the government's business, you know, but I guess they've taken it out because if it you, doesn't sound good. If you think <laughs> about it, well, you know, the mm. the world is becoming more woke. Yeah. By the by the second, right? It can so, be, yeah, people so can some, get sensitive about that statement. Yeah, so, and hey, you it. know what? That motto sounds kind of um, <laughs> inappropriate. But yeah, there was a time, that, uh, this wasn't that long ago, this was back in 2006, mm-hmm. that's when I um, joined Australian Embassy. Um, I don't remember when they took it out. I think by the time I left in 2010, they've already taken it out, I think. Yeah, I think. I, am, uh, I, I, I don't remember that motto anymore when yeah. I joined in 2010. Uh, so why do I bring that up, the people, our business, even though they've taken out that motto, it is still their business, you know, <laughs> because visas, you know, visas are for people. Mm. So, they still get revenue from the people. Yeah, from I mean, when you apply for a visa, you pay, you pay a fee, right? And it's not cheap. Yeah, so the, the temporary visas are the cheapest ones mm-hmm. because it's only temporary. You know, you get three to six months, mm-hmm. pay yes. $190, yep. right? You pay a little, you, the longer your visa duration is, the, the, higher. More, the, the higher fees the piece, you have to pay. Yeah. You notice that? I yep. mean, yeah. yeah so yeah. When, when you get to a student visa, how much do you have to pay? 700 something. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day, it was like $500. Mm. And back in the day, it was not that long ago. That was, a, that was just um, ten, 10 years ago, ten something like that. So from 500 now it's $700. And then um, you, you want to get a four-year visa, a work visa that would come to around two thousand plus dollars two thousand four hundred dollars and once you apply for um, a permanent visa that would be in the range of four thousand to something. five thousand four thousand six hundred something now. yeah you apply for a pot a, a partner visa oh how that's much is 8, that 000, it's now eight thousand dollars yeah so huge. so and every year first of july they it increase. increases a little bit just a little bit <laughs> Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, blaming students, international students, and temporary uh, visa holders, yeah. visa holders is not fair. I think because it's really the you know the government incentivizes people to come here because mm-hmm. we you know the country needs the workers. Country, yeah, well, not just workers, but you know, we need tourists. And international students yeah. to to steer the economy, to move the to progress the economy. So, and even though students, their primary purpose is to study, right? But they are they play a very significant role in filling labor short shortages here in Australia, especially here in Darwin, where you know we don't have. The population is very low, and you know, during there are a lot of jobs here that um, many Australians and permanent residents don't want to do. Yes, yes, That's I, the I reality. noticed that also. So, you mga students, our students here, um, especially with our partner schools, mm-hmm. uh, they work, uh, they study the um, kitchen cookery or something like yeah. that, kitchen management. They also. Um, work in the hotels Mm -hmm. so they're very important you know they feel labor shortages because unfortunately some of those um, companies they are unable to find locals yeah because um i mean people are going to hate me for saying this but (laughs) some (laughs) go on (laughs) i'm an australian citizen okay and i know that australian citizens and permanent residents are very choosy with with the job, I mean, even I've never worked in, <laughs> I've never worked in other job other than my own business. Mm. Okay, because yeah, I'm choosy because I'm I, I'm more, I can choose. You already have that status. Yeah, mm. but you know th- that's why it's very hard to 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 retain. You know, you you can recruit an Australian citizen, probably, you know, junior staff. But the reality is those the the junior staff just starting out they just m- most of the time they they just want to work for the experience 
And then they and move then, on. Then oh. they move on, and then you you have to train again. Mm. That's so it's the, going to be a cycle, a, a continuous yeah. cycle. That and it's just going very to difficult people. for business owners. Mm. Very, very difficult. Bad. Very bad for our business. And yeah, I, I see the importance of the students because they fill those um, important positions in you know even in cafes. Otherwise, yeah, some of the businesses like we just inter- down. interviewed Andrew mm. um, the pre- in the previous episode. And when he was he, when he came at, when he was an international student here, um, he was very loyal to his employers. Yes, you know, he mentioned yes. he worked for Halikos Hotel and Darwin Convention Center, and he built very good relationships with them. And even up to up now, to now that is up already to now, a PR. I mean, he, mm. yeah, he's already permanent resident now. He doesn't work for for them full time, but he still, you know, he's he's built that good relationship over time that even up to now you know i mean personally i think it's just because he, 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 he of the relationship that mm. he continues to work for them mm. Cause yeah, because he can find employment uh, in other sectors he said that he's employed uh, by the government now yeah by yeah. um in uh, royal darwin hospital mm. so you know um so uh, what I'm trying to say is, you know, it's unfair to blame international students because they really contribute so much to to the workforce and to the economy. That's correct. So when they study, they pay. Wh- when the international stu- students come here and they study, they um, they pay times three, times four of the tuition fees higher than a domestic student. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they also so that that alone already um, contributes to the the education provider. Mm. You know, like that that's that's revenue, that's revenue for the school, the university, the colleges, and you know where does this money go? This money goes to paying taxes. Um, and yeah. no, it provides jobs. Yep. You know, like the university has to hire. Teachers, yep. professors, staffing. additional staffing, of and not course. not just educators, but also you know um, main, maintenance people, people in the cafe. So it opened doors for employment. Correct. Um, and the other, you know, just yesterday, uh, I had a consultation with a client yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- this client was is not yet a permanent resident. She came as a student. And now she's on a temporary visa, and uh, she's uh, she's in she's currently working in the childcare, uh, childcare sector. Mm-hmm. So you know she works in a daycare center, mm-hmm. and she said she says it's so stressful uh, because there's not enough of them, there's not uh, enough staff to watch children. to watch the kids, mm-hmm. and. You know, it, the rules in Australia are very strict when it comes to children. You know, you really have to be very careful, make sure nobody gets hurt. So she says, it's very stressful. And, and, and I asked, why doesn't your employer just hire more staff? So I mean, and, and she said, well, nobody wants to apply for this kind of job because, it, it, because it's so stressful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, somebody comes in, they only stay for maybe three months, at the most six months. So they most just of gain them, experience. Yeah, just, once they have experience. They they move on to better things, and the employer is the employer stuck with training new staff over and over again. Mm-hmm. So most of us here are are either students or temporary residents. Okay. So that came from that came from All right. <laughs> actual actual scenario. So uh, that that is it is the way it is. So and we can't blame the employers either because they're just trying to. To do their business, mm. right? It's it's not easy to to run a business, and I can only imagine all the all the obligations you have to meet as an employer, especially in a childcare center. I remember before you mentioned this restaurant, like a Filipino restaurant that closed down, not because they don't have enough customers, but they don't have enough staffing. Yeah, it's a it's that's, that's correct. Sad. Yeah, mm. it's very difficult mm. to to find. To find staff, mm-hmm. and imagine if every time you train someone new, that's taking time away from the yes. employer. 
Yes. And the employer has so many things to do already. It's an investment, <laughs> actually. The time yeah. that you're spending training people. Yeah, it's an investment. Hmm. So you're just hoping as an employer that, that, that the person you train is going to stay for you, with you long term. Hmm. But you, you, you can't stop them if they resign, you know? Oh, you can't mm. hold them. Mm. <laughs> you can't hold them, you know, to you. So uh, um, I guess th th that's a first world problem, <laughs> you would say. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the problems of, problems of Australia. Um, so just going through the article that, that you gave to me, um, so there, there is a shortage in housing blamed on influx of international students and temporary mm -hmm. visa holders. So, uh, so that's just, you've heard my perspective on it and, um, yeah, I hope it, it makes people think before blaming others, you know, cause just imagine, um, just imagine if my the client that I have that I had yesterday who works in childcare. Mm -hmm. Imagine if all those students weren't there. The temporary who's gonna look after your kids in daycare? Just exactly. imagine. You know, I, I have a child in daycare. Sent <laughs> who goes to daycare every yes. day. So uh, I, I wouldn't know what to do with him if there were if there's no educators around. You know, like I I. I work every day. Where am I supposed to put him? I can't. I can't just leave him at home, right? He's three years old. He's like, <laughs> he's like running around. So I'm very grateful to the educators in uh, Stewart Park Child Care Center. They are so great, um, and I know they have a mix of, uh, in terms of staffing, um, I know that there's a mix of permanent residents, citizens, and and temporary temporary visa holders. But you know, I'll tell you what, I keep getting I keep getting regular emails that someone is leaving every f four months. I swear it's every four months. Like there's always a farewell party for someone. <laughs> well, they don't have a party anymore because it's so it's often. often. <laughs> it's so often that it would be It's like they're going to conduct it every three months. Yeah. So it's usually just an email a notification that oh we would like to well, sadly we would like to bid farewell to another staff who's leaving so you know it's it's always um that kind of scenario uh i don't know if it's just with darwin i think it's even more in major cities like it, it's even worse here in darwin than compared to you know interstate like sydney melbourne i think we got it the worst because of our location mm. um, fewer people are coming here um, a lot of people come here, but a lot but of people also leave. So transient. it's like, yeah, it's a, we have a very transient mm. nature here because uh, some people just can't, can't stand the heat That's or the, usual the humidity. Complaint. It's too hot, you say. Yeah. It's too humid, so they leave eventually. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, for me, I mean, we've been here eight years and for us, it's you know, we, we were able to withstand it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we've, we've come to love it. So, so Darwin is either you love it or you hate it, but the people who stay here, they really stay for, you know, their life, all their lifetime. Okay. Um, so, uh, what was I about to say? Um, yeah, we, we keep getting that, um, we have a very high attrition rate, would you say? Yes. Yeah. That's the term. Yeah. So as much as as much as there are a lot of people coming in from other parts of Australia, they it's the same number long. of people going out. Mm. So I don't know what what the anti government. I don't know what what's the solution because there's been a lot of incentives for people to to entice people to come here. Like I remember back, it was back in 2018 when they they have they had this pilot program, the anti government. Uh, initiated mm -hmm. this program where key industry workers would get uh, a cash incentive if oh, okay. if they come here if they transfer here mm -hmm. um, they transfer to Northern Territory and work at least five years um, so I, I forget how much money it was it depends on I think it was five thousand dollars 
but you would get it in increments. Mm. You, you wouldn't get the whole lump sum. Uh, so, yeah, th that worked. But then it was only for five years. So after... There's no news of follow-up or an extension I of haven't, program? I don't... Yeah, I haven't followed. I don't, I don't know if there's a report on it after because it's been well over five years since that happened. Yeah. Uh, but I did notice a lot of people coming in. But, and I've been in talks with um, anti-government. You know, so they would hold information sessions for agents, for migration agents. And they would say, they really want the population to grow. In of course. Because it's been at the stagnant rate of like 250,000 mm. uh, people. And what a, and it's, we have such a big space. <laughs> it is. <you> know? <laughs> big land mass on top of Australia. <laughs> and only 250,000 people. And so the, pop, the growing the population is, has always been one of the um, goals of anti-government anti but they do say you know as, ma as many people who come in it's the same number of people who go out every year so I don't know what the so solution they, I think is. they have to find a solution on how to make those people you know stay longer. so obviously it's not re just retention rate yeah yeah increase the retention yeah. rate so obviously cash just offering cash incentive is just a band-aid solution obviously it is obviously it is so well I was talking I was talking to my husband just the other day and 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 I, I had a, I had some ideas on um, what what kind of people would stay here I mean I mean because if you just look at the people who's already stayed the demographics mm -hmm. yeah for a long time like these are people who are um, sort of like like in, in our country, we would say they're like cowboys, you know, like they're not, they're not into, um, you know, uh, prestige. Because uh, some, of course, they prefer city life or they can yeah. make, you know, dress up it, 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 fashionable. Like. Yeah, so the NT yes. does attract a certain kind of person. Like you need to have this kind of personality. Laid back. Well, not laid because when you say laid back, it's like you're saying that person is k lazy. Lazy, <laughs> and it's not the case, you know. Um, the people who stay here for their life, for for their entire lifetime, have incredible amount of grit. Mm. You know, like grit is like when you when you don't give up on something. You know, you you keep trying. Um, you, you keep working at it until you get what you want. So it, it's those kind of people. People who don't care about, you know, the appearance or material things, um, beautiful. I mean, of course, we have beautiful houses here, right? But just, yeah, like, you know, my, the, the, la the landlord where we're renting at, mm -hmm. um, he recently passed away. Um, oh. And there was this uh, tribute to him online and so he's lived here his whole life you know and all, all the comments about him were really amazing they were talking about um, his name is Brian Meese he, he's our landlord he recently passed away um, and all the comments about him like oh he's an anti-icon anti-pioneer he's just always giving everyone a go and all these people who used to work for him also commented that what a what 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 a great man he was. But you know, I've met him in person, and he he's he was so ordinary in appearance. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think he was this. Um, I mean, people were saying like down to earth or like, like he was a like real boss. Mm -hmm. He was a real boss. You know, like when he when we came here to look at the place when we were thinking of renting it he just came out of his car it w the car was just an ordinary <laughs> he mm. was you know an old car just wearing a shirt and shorts and thongs <laughs> and yeah oh that's the landlord but he had this um he had this uh aura about him like he he, 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 he looked like a boss, boss. Yeah, yeah he's the yeah. boss you know and i remember uh, I, so I was making comments on, yeah, uh, the the back the back is a little bit 
you know, it needs to be mowed because there's a lot of grass growing. And then he, t he tells his, he tells his um, right hand guy, okay, we're gonna get that done today. And then the other guy goes, but, but Brian, it's all, uh, oh, he, sa oh, he says, time. oh, we'll, we'll do it, we'll do it uh, like on Friday, like two days later. And Brian goes, what's wrong with today? <laughs> but, Why not now? <laughs> yeah, like he was really like, do it now. You mm. Know? Mm. So I think it's those kind of pioneers, like, you know, no nonsense. He had that attitude, no nonsense. You can get it done now, do it get now. Get the work done. Yeah, get it done. He had that attitude about him. So I think it's those kind of people um, who, are, who would be attracted, who who would be attracted to NT and would probably stay here, you know. Um, so I guess the, what kind of people would not be attracted here? Which kind of people? So I would say it's those people who care about the corporate, corporate setting. I think, yeah, they would find that corporate setting in other major cities like Sydney and Melbourne. Yeah. We don't offer that here, don't have to wear uh, suit and tie yeah because it's too humid <laughs> yeah and you know people just look at you funny yeah <laughs> why you're wearing that <laughs> yeah oh uh, by the way thongs <laughs> Th thank you for that direct uh, Tristan was just saying that people might think th when I said thongs it's underwear no, it's no that no in, in Australia we, we Thongs are like slippers or yes. chinelas, okay? Mm. <laughs> so Slip-ons. Yeah, so n don't think that uh, he was just wearing <laughs> thongs. <laughs> he was wearing slippers, you know? Slip, um, yeah, uh, slip-ons. Slip-ons slip are different. Slip-ons slip slip are like sandals. Are like uh, slip-ons because you just slip it on. Ah, okay. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. I personally, I like it here. I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I'm wearing... Well, not thongs, but but slippers. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Darwin. That's how we roll in Darwin. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I prefer it that way. Yeah. Um, so the the um, opposite of that kind of person is. I mean, nothing against that. You know, everyone has. They they have everyone, everyone has, has their own preference. Their own pre yeah, yeah. di ba? Kanya kanyang trip oh, lang. Oh. <laughs> Kasi siyempre iba naman talaga yung. Uh, yung glamour, di ba? Yeah. It's very, it, it attracts people, that yeah. sense of glamour. Iba nga naman that you have to, you know, put on makeup and, mm -hmm. you know, dress up and you're meeting clients. Yeah. Iba pa rin yun. But, syempre, we all have different personalities yeah. and preference. Not saying, I'm not saying na walang glamour sa Darwin. Because we have like some, you know, um, I know that there's some events here like the Melbourne Cup mm -hmm. where people go and you know dress up but but honestly it's not as much as what you would probably have in Sydney or Melbourne, Melbourne. you know so yeah um, I've, I've come across some clients who are you know just waiting to get their their PR so that they can move or, or citizenship so they can move to other move, move to mm -hmm. to other states like you know move to melbourne the, the, a lot of people a lot of those people choose melbourne that's their first choice melbourne. melbourne and what i can say is when i look at their personality um most of them came from really really um the corporate backgrounds, you know, for in their home country. Mm -hmm. Like even before they came to Australia, they were already working in really um, big, big corporate institutions. You know, they were CEOs. So that's why they long for it. Or, yeah. and and I can understand why they wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't stay here mm -hmm. in Darwin because even when they come in, the moment they come into my office, they already have that, um, you know vibe about them they, you know um like they're really uh, in tagal it's like postura oh Post postura ma ayos, yung so, oh. ayos uh -oh. niya, you know like mm -hmm. um they're not dolled up but you know just wearing yeah for not formal either but it's just not darwin <laughs> not the darwin aura <laughs> yeah yeah like mm. wearing high heels and makeup so it's like oh 
this one's not from around here. Because you know? we only do that when we have events. Yeah. Because uh, unlike in you know some of those who came from Manila, mm-hmm. parang it's regular na parang office attire they say. Yeah. It's the office attire, the high heels. Sometimes the ladies there yeah, they are in wearing skirt. My yeah. mga boys ay naka tie and yeah. suit. And that's fine, you know, because like I said, people all people are are different, you know. Mm-hmm. So so if, if if I may suggest to anti government, perhaps you should change your you know, maybe you should hire like a, a psychologist, right? Because psychologists can like um sort of uh, well they can explain how they are able or you, to you can like have a personality trait thing, like take Because they, they have, them, yeah. they have the expertise yeah. to better understand. Like instead mm. of offering cash incentive, like maybe you should have a, a personality test, you know? Because then if they are matched, yeah, if their if personality well matched, matches yeah. the. So I don't think it's about the cash incentive. It's about the, your personality that would let you stay here. So. Anti-government. If you want people to, s- if you want to retain, consider Carol's yeah, consider suggestion. This is free advice, <laughs> no charge. Yeah. Consider um, yeah. uh, coming up or you know creating a personality test um, that's custom made, tailor made, uniquely for the Northern Territory. Yeah, because. Um, Yeah, just look at all the people who, you know, been here 30, 50 years. Look at what their personality is like. And Come you will see. Come up with a study at least. Uh, you know, like it's wor- I think it's oh. worth a, a research. Mm. You Why know, not? You, you'll see that there's a common denominator there in their personalities. Yeah. <laughs> I think, we, do, I think we, we kind of went off topic, <laughs> right? <laughs> But is that okay, Derek? <laughs> He's nodding. Okay, okay. lah. <laughs> so okay, lah. Yeah. So um, uh, do, how how much time do we have? Because uh, uh, we still have time. We did we did have other topics here because uh, we were talking about international students, right? And the the jobs that are high in demand, mm-hmm. right? You have a list here. So yeah. could you just uh, yeah? Why don't you go ahead and read out? All right. So you mga jobs that are high in the, uh, that are In demand, particularly here in Darwin, uh, most of these are in hospitality industry. Mm-hmm. So um, they are under the TSS or the Temporary Skill Shortage Visa. But most of these um, occupation uh, has a pathway to 186 or Permanent Residency Visa. So mm-hmm. okay. Uh, so was this from the um, a particular list? Because you know, there's three kinds of list in uh, in. Skilled occupation yeah, list. There's yeah, there's three types of skilled mm. occupations list: the medium to long term, mm. the short term list, and the regional occupation list. The regional. So you you pick just a few occupations. Yes, here. yes, just Was a it, few. What from from what list did you get it from? Well, it's actually a combination of a short. Mm-hmm. Short term and medium term. Okay. So, like this one, um, accommodation and hospitality managers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you, that uh, that occupation, um, you'd have to have an advanced diploma, mm-hmm. and of course, a sil- skills assessment. And the assessing body under that is Vet Assess. So your, you know, possible or al- alternative job titles would be like, um, boarding house manager. Mm-hmm. Guest house manager, hostel manager, mm-hmm. and of course, um, we have partner schools that offer courses or programs like ICAE and our latest partner school, Entrepreneur Education in Gold Coast. So those schools they offer diploma in hospitality and certificate three mm-hmm. or certificate four. So um, you may you might want to consider those schools if you are aiming to be in this industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, number one is accommodation and hospitality managers. The next is um, cafe or restaurant manager. It's very mm-hmm. in demand also here in Darwin. So alternative job titles would be like food and beverage manager, or it could be you could be a restaurateur. So um, what what's the you know main responsibilities of a cafe or restaurant manager? Um, they organize and control the operation of cafes, mm-hmm. and. You can be like what was I mentioned earlier. 
um, a cafe manager and to be able to do so uh, again skills assessment and um, a certain um, education level associate degree or advanced diploma mm -hmm. Andrew's background was cafe or restaurant manager yeah so. and he studied in ICAE one of our partner yes, school correct. so ICAE and again um, our uh, partner school and entrepreneur education in Gold Coast they offer uh, a wide range of hospitality programs yeah. hospitality jobs are always in demand here in Darwin because you know we we heavily rely on tourism mm. so that's why um, yeah hospitality courses are a very good choice for uh, prospective international students. Okay, and uh, go on, Miss Anna. The next, chef, baker, cook. Mm -hmm. Again, it's so in demand. Mm -hmm. So, um, you want to organize and prepare the cooking of food in cat and catering establishments, you go for those uh, courses um, offered by ICAE in cor uh, course in baking, Certificate and Diploma in Hospitality plus the Kitchen Management. Mm -hmm. So we have a school here, our partner school, ICAE, and then one in Gold Coast if you want to consider studying in Gold Coast. And uh, to be able to do so, okay, Shampra, you have to have the certain advanced diploma. Mm -hmm. And skills assessment conducted by TRA or Trades Recognition Australia. Mm -hmm. So, um, so even if you've already studied hospitality in the Philippines, you know, like Andrew was saying, there's still like a difference. Mm -hmm. There's still a difference when you. Uh, it, it's good you already have a a foundation. Like, yeah, like he said, a certain backbone of that. Yes, uh, correct. Like a certain knowledge in that industry, but yeah. you know, you have to. It's different when you when you come to Australia, and you know there's uh, different standards. Different you learn regulations. the standard Austra the Australian standard, and in you know the, the jargon is also different. And yeah, you you learn more as uh, when you go to another country. Another one, community worker, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, I had welfare a support workers. <laughs> so very important. Guys, yes. Australian, my co-Australian citizens, <laughs> we, <laughs> we need community workers and yeah. child care, child care um, educators. Community child care educators. Yeah. So, uh, they work in, uh, they can be disability support officer, family support, or youth worker. And for those working in child care, but in kindergarten teacher, yeah. mm -hmm. and working in daycare just as carol mentioned yeah. earlier mm -hmm. and the our partner schools the, that we can recommend that have those alana k yes thank you alana k for training um our children's educators yes. <laughs> alana k here in darwin and they also have other branches mm -hmm. and also in gold coast um our one of our partner school imagine education so they provide courses or programs uh for those occupation, if you are mm -hmm. aiming for that. Yeah. Yep, so that's a good list. Miss Anna, thank you for that. Thank um, you. So what an interesting top, uh, topic we've had today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us on this video podcast. Thank you, so whether you're an international student, aspiring to study abroad, or a professional looking to work in Australia, it is essential to seek professional advice, stay informed, and embrace the opportunities that migration brings. And here on Enhanced Down Under, we will help you choose the right path for your career goals. Um, please follow us on Facebook, Enhanced Down Under, or Enhanced NT. Uh, we're also uh, available on Instagram. Uh, and you can email us at skills at enhancednt.com.au. Thank you, and until next time. Thank you.